Iranians are voting for a new president after Ibrahim Raisi's sudden death in a helicopter crash, choosing from a tightly controlled group of four candidates loyal to the Supreme Leader. Shortly after polling stations opened, Ayatollah Ali Khomeini cast his vote. As ballots are counted manually, the final result is expected to be announced only in two days. The question now is, who will Iran pick? My name is Muhammad Ali Dost and I work in the private sector. I was unsatisfied with the current situation. I was not happy, so I came to vote. I don't expect too much of a change, but I wanted to vote for my favorite candidate. I don't think there would be a big change. My name is Badri and I'm a retired person. I came to vote because I'm interested in the future of my country, my own self, my family, my children. I definitely should vote for it. Now I am in the queue. My legs have a problem, so I am sitting outside for my turn to vote and hope to make a better future together for our country. Thank you. I am Ali Abdullah Zadeh, the chief of Mr. Pezeshkian's campaign. We are expecting by God's willing that Mr. Pezeshkian would be the next president and the winner of this competition with the definite vote of the people of Iran. The important issue for us is the legitimacy of these elections and up to now, by the grace of God, everything is going smoothly. As you're observing, it was a good campaign process of 15 days in which our society was informed our ideas, the candidates' ideas, and I also thank the national television for providing all range of programs for better public awareness. If Mr. Pezeshkin wins, then a lot of changes will be done in Iran which will be in accordance with our slogan of justice, transparency and rule of law. And in these regards, people of Iran should expect changes and also an improve in the standard of living of the people of Iran. 80 candidates entered the race to be president. The Guardian Council approved six, barring all seven of the women candidates. And in the final stretch, two of them, both conservatives, dropped out before voting began. Amir Hussein Hashmi was the first to rescind his candidacy. Hashmi was one of Racy's vice presidents and he had campaigned on a continuation of the former president's policies. And as he pulled out, Hashmi urged other conservative candidates to offer a united front. Soon after, Tehran's mayor, Ali Raza Zakani, joined Hashmi and boarded the withdrawal wagon. Zakani had attempted to run for president in 2013 and 17 as well. It was only in 2021 that he received approval from the Guardian Council only to withdraw his candidacy as he backed out yet again this time. Zakani also asked the two conservative candidates to unite and not leave the revolutionary forces rightful demands unanswered. Emerging as the most significant of them all was Muhammad Bakir Kali Baf. He has served as Speaker of Parliament since 2020. He boasts an extensive military history, including three years as Commander of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, Air Force. Uh, three other candidates have all been IRGC officials as well, but Kalibaf maintains close ties with the IRGC. He is known for his role in crackdowns on student protesters in Iran while serving as the IRGC general and later as its police chief. The second key contender is another conservative, Saeed Jalili. Though he served as the country's nuclear negotiator, Jalili is a critic of international negotiations over Iran's nuclear program. If elected, Jalili is expected to continue the harsh crackdown on anti-government protesters and on Iranian women accused of violating the country's mandatory hijab rules. Mustafa Por Moham Madi is the only cleric in the race, also conservative. He had a leading role in the 1988 executions of thousands of political prisoners held in Iranian jails. Let's now look at the sole reformist in the race, Masood Pejaskian. He has based his campaign around Iranian women, youth and ethnic minorities. He has focused on reopening nuclear talks with the West and let's say allowing Pejaskian to run could be an attempt to increase voter turnout. The question is, will Iran's moderates turn out in favor of him or will they not turn out at all? 
The outcome is far from certain and is viewed as a welcome change from the last election. According to experts, it is likely that none of the contenders will win a simple majority. In that case, Iranians will take to the polls once again in July for a runoff election between two frontrunners. And Anas Malik is joining us live from Tehran for the very latest on this. And Anas, what is it looking like? You're at a polling station. What is the voter turnout? And what's the mood like? There are four contenders in this race. And as we just pointed out, there could be no one who gets the clear majority and there might be a runoff as well. Well, I'll answer the first question last with regards to the voter turnout because I really want the pictures to speak for themselves. But onto, this, onto, onto the other parts of your question, yes, there are four candidates, there are three conservatives and one reformist. And the conservative vote banks seem to be, have been split because of uh, this, uh, this divide within. Uh, there are three conservative candidates, Bakr Kalibaf, Saeed Jalili, and uh, Mustafa Pur Mohammadi. Uh, that seemed, would seem to have an impact, if at all, uh, uh, in the longer run or as in when the votes are consolidated. I'm inside the Husseini Irshad. What you see behind me is a polling station. This entire community hall has been set up as a polling station, and booths have been uh, uh, booths have been set up all across these halls. You see people from the minority community. You see people from all walks of life. Be that be women, be that be children. And with regards to the first part of your question, Bhairvi, I'll just ask my camera person to walk with me. And uh, I mean, if the pictures were to speak uh, for themselves, uh, then this is a clear indicator that what is the voter turnout, at least in the city of Tehran particularly, uh, the, oh, the turnout has been overwhelming. Uh, there have been people in greater numbers who've been here, uh, and there are lines of people. I'll just walk, we'll just walk out and I'll show you uh, that uh, uh, how long is the queue outside of the people who are waiting to get inside uh, this very polling station. You see, that's the queue. This is the queue. The soldiers here are right now serving water because it's hot. It's, it's, a, it's a hot and humid day. It's expected to be 38 degrees. Women, children, they're here with families to vote for the elections, for these regulations, and the line is huge. It goes the other way around, all uh, all the other way around, uh, I mean, as long as I can see it. So this gives you a sense of how serious the people of Iran are with regards to these elections, and uh, what this ele particular election, presidential election, the ninth election for a president of Iran, really means to the people. Where are we? Right, uh, right, Anas, thanks very much indeed for joining us with the very latest on that and we will co keep coming back to you for more. All right, uh, our principal diplomatic correspondent Sadhan Sibyl also spoke to the Iranian ambassador uh, on the voting process in Iran and New Delhi for these presidential polls. Listen in. Iranians are voting today to elect their next president. With me is the Iranian ambassador to talk about the elections and the uh, provisions made here in Delhi for the Iranians to vote. So welcome to Vion. It's always a pleasure to speak to you. Thank you. And my first question to you is uh, about the presidential elections. The voting is taking place today. So if you can give us the details as to the process, how many Iranians are voting in Iran itself, when will be the results out, and uh, the security measures taken by the authorities, given that this is a large-scale measure. Thank you for this opportunity to share with our Indian uh, nation uh, some information about the Iranian presidential election. According to the, pres to the Constitution of Iran, the president should be elected by direct vote of the people. So, uh, and, and based on the Constitution, if uh, president demise or disabled to do its duty, during the 50 days, the new election should be conducted and new president uh, should be elected. Uh, according to this, the uh, Ministry of Interior of Iran uh, organized the new election, 14th election, presidential election on 28th of June. Uh, today in India, we have, um, uh, we have uh, set up four voting centers in Delhi, in Culture House in Mumbai and uh, Hyderabad in our Consulate General and uh, the fourth one in Pune in uh, Imambara. We uh, hope that uh, about um, 
about four, four, three to four thousand Iranian are here. We facilitate uh, the condition for them to participate in their and utilize their right to vote for their president. Regarding the regarding the uh, number of uh, people who are able to vote. Uh, there are about more than 50 million Iranians are able to vote today uh, and we hope that the, uh, they will use, utilize this right to, uh, to select their and elect their president. I hope that uh, till tomorrow the result will be released. But uh, it, this result should be approved by the Guardian Council, mm. which is the main responsible for election in Iran. Mm. Uh, and after the approval of this council, the new president officially has been elected. Mm. I think it will last two or three days. For all the latest news, download the Vion app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.